I have a lot of those gone through. Ready, Ryan? Ready? Okay. So to solve a problem like this, ladies and gentlemen, the first thing I want you to do is kind of totally forget about the inequality sign. Let's forget about the inequality sign until it actually is needed. All right? So we'll just have the set equal to 0, and that's actually solving it. But let's go ahead and graph this. How would I graph this inequality? If let's say I wanted to use that as a function, y equals negative x squared minus 4x plus 32. All right, let's forget about the solving part. Actually, I'll just leave the inequality there. It was less than or equal to 0, right? But let's just solve it as a function. Let's just see what this um, graph is going to look like. So the first thing I do is I'm just going to rewrite it as a function or as a, an equation and just go from there. Now, to use this in the vertex form, all right, the first thing, Hazel, I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to complete the square again, right? So to go ahead and, and complete the square, the reason why I'm going to, when I go and complete the square, remember the first thing I do is put parentheses around my two terms that I'm going to create the perfect square out of, right? Now, when completing the square, it's very important. Remember when there was a number in front of the x squared, we had to factor it out? Because you can only complete the square when your a is equal to 1. Here, my a is equal to negative 1. So I have to factor out a negative 1. Okay? I'm only factoring the negative 1 out of the first term. First two terms, I'm sorry. Now I can complete the square. So again, I follow my form for completing the square. B divided by 2 squared. 4 divided by 2 squared, which is equal to 4. Now remember, when we were solving by completing the square, we added it to both sides, or added it to both sides of the equation. But now I want to keep everything on the same side because I want to I want to have y equals an equation, right? Or y equals an expression. So I'm going to keep everything on the same side. So to keep this equation true, if I add 4 to one side, I have to make sure I subtract 4 on one side. But remember, am I really adding 4? I'm adding a 4 that's being multiplied by negative 1, right? When I added that 4 inside the parentheses, it's being multiplied by negative 1. Therefore, this 4 needs to be multiplied by negative 1. And then I still have a 32 on the outside. So now. We can write this. This is a perfect square trinomial. We've been practicing these a lot. A perfect square trinomial can be written as a perfect square. y equals negative 1 x plus 2 squared. Negative 4 times 4 is 4 plus 32 is 36. Okay. Well, we don't, why do we want to get rid of it? Because remember, the negative 1 helps us describe our graph, how we're going to graph it, right? So now, ladies and gentlemen, we want to go ahead and graph this. So to go ahead and graph this, we can use a couple points. One, we can find the vertex. And then two, we can also um, find the x and y intercepts and then kind of use symmetry to graph it. Yes? Okay. Well, remember, let's go and look at what does this negative one tell us? The negative 1 tells us we're going to reflect about the what, though? The x-axis. axis right? So this negative 1 is not going to reflect our phase shift. It's actually going to reflect if it opens up or down. So let's go ahead and graph this for Dustin. All right, so since this is up to 36, I'm going to go by 4s. 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24. Uh, 28, 32, 36. Okay, I'm going to go by fours there. And then I'll go by ones over here. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, we can find the vertex, right? Our vertex is at negative 2, 36. So negative 2 all the way up to 36. That's the vertex. Now, the best way I can kind of say, like, describe it is, well, you can find other points. Um, this one is going to be down one over one, but it's going to be kind of hard to graph. What I would do is I'd find the x. Why don't we find the, uh, the y-intercept, right? We can find the y-intercept here. The y-intercept is when x equals 0. So the y-intercept, you're going to have y equals negative 1, 0 plus 2 squared plus 36. So 0 plus 2 is 2. 
guys. 0 plus 2 is 2. Y intercept, x equals 0, right? 0 plus 2 is 2. 2 squared is 4. 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. Therefore, y equals positive 32, right? So therefore, my y-intercept is at 32. Okay, so now, so then, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to find this is over 2 at 32, so I can go right to is also going to be at 32 because remember I have an axis of symmetry right there. So therefore I can kind of graph those two points. And then lastly, if you want to find like another two points, we could also we could always find the x intercepts. Right? We could always always find the x intercepts or we could also plug in different values. Well, how about we plug in 1, right? Why don't we figure out what the value of 1 is? And then let's reflect it over the axis of symmetry. So just like when we graph tables, let's plug in 1. 1 plus 2 is 3. 3 squared is 9. 9 times negative 1 is negative, um, negative 1, or negative 9. Negative 9 plus 36 is 27. So over at 1, I could say, all right, my graph's going to be roughly around 27. Go over one more, it's going to be roughly around 27. So you guys can see my graph is kind of taking the shape like this. Okay. Now, let's go and determine because that's not really what the graph is saying. I expect you guys to have two points to the right and to the left of the axis symmetry, just like we've always done. If I ask for the x intercepts, we can go from there. But their question is, is the, when the only graph this, when, are this, when is this equation true when negative x squared minus 4x plus 32 is greater than or equal to 0? So we have not solved it. We just graphed the equation. We did not solve it yet. So how do we do this? How do we test inequalities? And everybody remember, you have to use your test, test points. And what's the best, greatest test point ever zero, used zero. unless your graph goes through 0, 0, right? So we test 0, comma 0. Negative 0 squared minus 4 times 0 plus 32 is greater than or equal to 0. 0, 0, 0. So it's 32 greater than or equal to 0. Yes. yes. So therefore, since our test point, since our test point is true, okay, we're going to shade towards our test point inside the problem. And the other thing which I didn't go over is also notice that our inequality symbol is greater than or equal to. So therefore, our shape of our parabola is going to be a, I'm not the shape, but the line of our parabola is going to be solid, not dashed. Yes? Here? I just plugged in 1. I just pretend I was like doing a table. Just plugged in at 1, what is the value? And I got 27. And then I reflected it over the y-axis. Or not the y-axis, but the axis symmetry. Yes? Yeah, you could pick different numbers. You could pick. Well, I mean, like, gone over one, down. Yeah, yeah, you could. It was just, it's a little bit difficult just because the scaling of it. But yeah, because you're not, because it's not one by one, you know what I'm saying? Since I did a different scale, I decided not to do it that way. But yeah, you could have. Yeah. Because, uh -huh. like, this is the same as doing that. Yeah. 